Hey guys, so we had to deal with the elements a little bit on this episode. Uh, a lot of wind in the background, but if sound quality is an issue, you can skip about 25, 30 minutes into the episode. We ended up uh, moving to a backup recording location. Yeah, so. and we, we, we kept it a little briefer this time on the uh, the second half. It it waned uh, as Corey tried to carry that uh, interview, but it's a little better sound quality. And yeah, we'll, we'll probably be at the uh, alternate studio for... Uh, another pod or so until the uh, the weather decides to agree with us again but uh yeah once again like and subscribe to the pod and uh, help us build this coalition so we can uh, bring in the leader of the blue chicken cult himself all right okay are we we, we are, are good to go all right awesome so we're here space weirdo friday uh cory good again we're, we're gonna double down on mr good uh this time he is without the constraint the ball and chain that was jenny mccarthy uh-huh Ooh. He's uh he's finally back to uh being uh the lead dog again. Yes, Jenny drove that conversation like uh Billy Joel. It was uh <laughs> she's she's not the greatest conversationalist. Better than I had uh anticipated, but certainly not stellar. You know, for being for doing the fake radio like, "Oh my god, Corey, that's so fascinating." <laughs> she was good at it she was better than i would have expected she suffers from like a top 40 radio dj syndrome i the, think anybody who talks to themselves long enough eventually will do that so this is this is Corey good and michael sala a name that sounds familiar to both of us but we can't quite place him yeah i, I feel like i know it from somewhere i just don't exactly know where i'm almost positive david wilcock has brought him up i'm, I'm pretty sure that's where we both heard the name but i guess we're we're going in uh fresh to this so this is israeli x mil space chief u.s and alien galactic federation deal in brackets or whatever human experiments and mars base so uh i guess without further ado unless you got anything let's go for it all right Stive here in. we go or not psych <laughs> it's just frozen psych <laughs> fuck me uh, for joining the Spear Beat hey. YouTube channel. Today I'm talking with Scalar Dr. Weapons about some <laughs> rather exciting um, articles that have appeared on even mainstream media. And it's been trending on Twitter. You see it all over Facebook. It's regarding the Israeli uh, spy, as they're calling him. Oh, no. Who, Look what's on his hands. What's on his hands? Hold on. He's wearing. He's wearing fingerless gloves, I oh, think. Oh, no. Good Lord. In his own house? <laughs> He's dressed like uh, Andrew Dice Clay. Look, maybe maybe he went for a walk before this. I don't, I don't know, to be honest. That's kind of weird, but... The only place I've seen those gloves worn is by homeless people in movies. Like, that's, that's hobo gloves. Yeah, pretty much. Those are hobo gloves, actually. <laughs> and although they're new, so they're fresh hobo, hobo yeah. gloves. The only person who gets uh, a pass on that is Big J Okerson. He wears the fingers, uh, fingerless gloves, but yeah. he's also a giant man. He's been so. doing it long enough, too. Like, that's always been his thing. Yeah, him and Dice get a pass, but uh, I was good. I was thinking, what if I just keep texting Lewis just repeatedly? <laughs> Have we talked about that before? Oh, we've interacted with... Uh, I don't know, maybe. Who the fuck remembers at this point? We're 101 episodes in. Is this 101 or 100? This I think will it's... be 101. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, we've, uh, when the Legion of Skanks guys did their, their show at the uh, comedy store out here, yeah. our, our brand was sponsoring some of the shows. So we've had vague interactions with them. Yeah, and then that and guy And they were can't... dumb enough to give us uh, their numbers. Yeah, and then <laughs> those got canceled, so we started our own podcast because, uh, fuck it. And here we are. So let's uh, let's get back to fingerless glove, Corey. Um, now, I think he's trying to be like Michael United Jackson. States, uh, <laughs> signed an agreement with an extraterrestrial federation. And, uh, oh, hey, bottom right of the screen. Now he's trying to be like self-aware. How many times can I say um? <laughs> so he's got a little self-deprecating humor there. All right, all right. I like to see that. Uh, we had a joint base on Mars. Um, welcome. Michael, um, Dr. Sala, um, how um, are you doing today? Those I'm, I'm gloves good, are Corey. atrocious. <laughs> here, really great. And speaking of atrocious, holy fuck me. Whoa. Broadcasting yeah. from uh, under an overpass <laughs> in front of a mural. <laughs> he, uh, what the fuck is going on in that background? 
What is going on with his eyebrows? <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Those things are about to fucking slither away. Those those may be the biggest eyebrows. Those look like props. That's like that looks like a shitty disguise. Yeah, that's uh, that's. It looks some, like a fake nose with like gray eyebrows. It's a bootleg spy movie eyebrow set. <laughs> that is one hell of an image. I hope this guy's smart <laughs> because look, uh, does that not look like the face of an insider to you? This <laughs> from Mrs. Riley's uh, scientist. I mean, he's really very senior. For him to come out. And, and share what he has been saying is a really confirmation about is that the sort Australian? of we've been talking about for a few years now. And now we're getting it from yeah, the person like it. that okay. uh, headed Israel's uh, uh, Israel program for spy satellites. Spy satellites. For 30 years. So it's yeah, you, you being, being the researcher that you are, uh, you dug into him and, and researched what's, what's him. What's with everybody calling themselves researchers now? It sounds better than guy who reads Wikipedia articles. It's a, yeah, uh, I mean, I guess so. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> it's a more proper term, and it sounds important without actually meaning anything. Like, you don't get granted the right of researcher. You're not, you don't go to school to become a, a researcher. That's just a guy who reads about shit. Yeah, well, I mean, like, doing research doesn't make you something special. That's just called, like, re reading. Basic doing, reading. I don't know. We're doing a research. Yeah, we're doing research right now, in fact. So I guess we're both researchers. I mean, I guess you have to call it that when you're researching things that aren't tangible objects. Yeah, I guess a, a guy who reads crazy books from the bookstore doesn't sound as good. So yeah, they're, I don't, they're I don't, stuck with the uh, the title. I mean, I guess this is why David always has to go with, uh, I've read over 300 books. <laughs> it's an appeal to authority. Sure. And can... Can you kind of give us a little bit of a summary of uh, why we God, should pay gloves. attention to this person? Okay, all right. Well, he has a PhD in aeronautical. You think he just came from dance class? Uh, <laughs> it is very like flash dancing. The hair with the gloves. And uh, he was. I'm not going to be able to see through those eyebrows. Those things are going to fuck with me the whole time. I don't think he can see through those eyebrows. Uh, here's my theory: those eyebrows are the aliens, and they're controlling him. <laughs> His caterpillar eyebrows are. Yeah, Look at this right fuck. Look at those fucking eyebrows. I wish there was a way we could just zoom in on his face all the way. <laughs> just... All right. Uh, the Space Research Institute at Technion, which is uh, a, um, a, a technical uh, university I in guessed that. Israel, and that's the place where they actually run... Israel's spy satellite. Israel's. So this guy. I will does, say, look at the eyebrows. Look how expressive he can get. Look how say, far, far up the head they travel. It reminds me, Da Vinci did a series of drawings where he would draw ugly people, <laughs> like grotesque people, and that's exactly what this dude would be a model for. Oh, we're sorry, Michael Sala, but uh, I'm sure he has some great insight. Those eyebrows are just hard to get past. Yeah, they say not to judge a book by its cover, but. I don't know if I can get past this. The gloves and the eyebrows are a fucking one-two combo for the ages. Well, this is why I'm going to assume that he's actually just some sort of host to an alien hybrid that have transformed into his eyebrows. You know what I will say, though? Are, uh, people who look this ridiculous have to be good. That's true. He probably <laughs> has some good shit to say. I'm not going to lie. Because if you look like that and you don't have good shit to say, no one's going to fucking pay attention. Yeah, like Bashar only works because he's entertaining. Yes, yes. Ran that for 30 years after having served in the Israeli Defense Forces for a number of years. So from 1981 up until, um, to, uh, up until two th uh, it, was, it was about 30 years. <laughs> All right, maybe not. <laughs> maybe story's, I spoke too soon. <laughs> story's falling apart a little faster than I expected. I still can't quite place the accent. It's like Australian mixed with Israeli, almost. There's uh, like a, it's like a muted Australian accent. There's, I mean, I think he's just going for general Australian. I think it's just like heavy. Like, Do you think he's faking the accent as part of his disguise? <laughs> that would be funny. Uh, Corey, you know, I just can't keep doing this, man. <laughs> now back to the Australian, the aliens in Israel. I knew someone who did that when I was, uh, I was super cool in high school. I was Crikey the, the Grays! <laughs> I was the head of academic decathlon, 
And we had a guy on the team who would give his speeches and do his interview portion of the contest in a fake British accent. And it was <laughs> fucking terrible. It was a really bad accent. Like bad enough, and just bad enough that everybody knew he was faking it pretty much? 100%, but they couldn't call him on it because that's all he would talk. Like, that's just how he would talk when he would go in the room to give a speech or do the interview. Did he, like, identify as that or? No, I think he was just doing it to be silly. Oh, okay. He was just. It was just a goof. He was goofing. That was his gag. <laughs> yeah. 2010, when he retired, he ran this uh, institute and the satellite program, uh, which for Israel is really doing a lot of their espionage or their space surveillance. And, and because of that, that meant that he got to work closely with the National Reconnaissance Office um, and the CIA, because the CIA runs the National Reconnaissance Office in conjunction with the Pentagon. And so that means that the kind of programs that the NRO and the CIA have been doing for years in terms of uh, space surveillance, uh, they have cooperated with Israel. And so this is the person... That was a long way to go for that sentence. ...who headed the Israeli side of the spy satellite system. Uh, he personally was in charge when 20 satellites went up. And so that's the cover. I mean, that's does, really... Does that uh, just... Isn't this just kind of like the Jewish cabal theory, but they're good? <laughs> it's the uh, the Jews are actually okay theory. Well, if like they're the ones helping the aliens instead of the ones like using their technology for evil or some shit. Yeah, I, I, I guess... Because Israel's an interesting choice. I wouldn't have... Uh, well, they're God's chosen people, as well, that, you know. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Does that mean they actually were? Although, does that mean they always knew God was an alien? Well, so far, all they've said is this Israeli dude was in charge when they launched a bunch of satellites. Mm -hmm. I don't really know what that has to do with aliens. I mean, I know the guy they're talking about was legit. He was, yeah, yes. like, he's the real deal, so... I have concerns about him the same way I have concerns about... Uh, who was that fucking, that astronaut that lost his mind? I want, uh, I want to say... Mitchell. Edgar Mitchell. Edgar Mitchell. I was going to say Edgar Casey, but that, I knew that was wrong. <laughs> I'm concerned about that, where it's a credible individual who's in the uh, the twilight years of his life who, who starts to wane in his ability to decipher fact from fiction. Yeah, my hesitation a little bit was more so that he got a book coming out. Yeah, when Any, I saw that, that was anytime someone's got a book coming out, I know I know to go. Hmm, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this with a grain of salt because I know you're making money off it. I still can't find that book, by the way. I I've has been it looking, officially come out yet? The articles I've read have said it's out, but then when I search for the title of the book, all that shows up is the articles about the book coming out. So hmm. I don't know. There's nothing on Amazon. Maybe I gotta go to one of those like theosophic book society you things. gotta go to some sort of niche uh, like boutique uh, online store we do have the psychic bookstore down the street maybe i gotta pop in there and see what they got going on i got a feeling they ain't there no more <laughs> you don't think a uh, psychic bookstores are a recession proof business and not unless they saw this coming ironically enough yes the, the sort of thing that israel's defense forces and the mossad does to kind of like give them information about real world intelligence uh, in the middle east uh, but what he's just revealed through these interviews, which are part of a book that's just come out, is actually mm, that so it, it was much more than just satellites up there, that uh, they were working with uh, the Americans and that there was, you know, the joint extraterrestrial agreement. So, so big news. Big, so, you know, that's where I wanted to kind of get your uh, feedback on what, what you know. About, uh, he stole my story. <laughs> I don't being know shit. In this kind of like um, liaison with extraterrestrials on, on behalf of the U.S. government. Yeah, um, I, the NRO and was it the DIA, I believe, um, had assets that are very, you know, are similar to what this person's describing. You know, and, and them talking about the Federation. Those gloves we have to remember, are just you know, so distracting. I talked earlier about this Galactic Super Federation. And Not the just the Federation, the Super Federation. Federation. Super. Body, or a place where people came together to, you know, present their uh, 
experiments, the progress of their experiments, see the, the progress of others, and to kind of, it's kind of govern, a governed, governing, governing body. Jesus Christ. And, Did both these guys just fucking huff paint before this? I'm going to assume he might have had a little toke or two. Allegedly. Um, yeah, they both seem, maybe maybe it's going to take a minute for them to get into the swing of things, but they're, uh, they're coming out of the gates with not their, uh, their A-plus game. Well, I do wonder if they're hesitant to go too far overboard in case this dude has more info. Also, I think uh, any good content they're going to want behind a paywall of some variety. Hence the constant plugging of AscensionWorks.tv in the upper left-hand corner of this video. Yeah, he's taking the Alex Jones model. Yeah. Although I prefer this way. I'd rather Alex Jones just had ads on the screen at all times instead of taking a commercial break every 90 seconds. Well, that's because of radio, not anything else. That's why radio's dead. It's yeah. because you can't do it. It's the only there way AM works. Small federations that are made up of different groups that are allied that are coming together in the in the super federation. Um, so it sounds very much to me like the genetic farmer races that I had described. Farmer races? I haven't heard. I've heard of builder races. I think what he is implying is the group that went around collecting the good parts of every uh, race's DNA and then was like splicing them Oh, the ones the who others. are making like super creatures? Yeah, well no, like the ones who are just, they're taking all the good DNA and they're helping the other races. So they like collect, they're farming, quote unquote human and other entity Yeah, traits. that's what like okay. the genetic experiments are, is they're trying to have have it all. Alright, that, that makes more sense than the farming, I was thinking. <laughs> the, the deep state or they the, grow crops. <laughs> yeah. They're brought over on ships. <laughs> made deals like I had described with uh, some of these extraterrestrial groups that were here supposedly monitoring us, but also tinkering with our genetics. Oh, there you go. There it is. Let's say someone I know my dude. deal in <laughs> the 1940s. Like I've described before, these ETs have the ability to travel in time as easily as they travel in space. So, if they, they sure have, fucked up nine eleven, then show up here, yeah, I don't know what they, that makes, makes it intentional, right? And, yeah, you know, this this is part of the uh, the time travel paradox. I know they say you're not supposed to change things, but clearly they're changing things if they're coming back to take DNA from people in order to create super entities. Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe you're allowed to do it indirectly just not with towers because that whole <laughs> allowing uh, genocides and, and catastrophes is a bit part of the plan shitty. Man. look i mean we just we had to realize how terrible we were what if it just turns out they think everyone in those towers deserved to die <laughs> that'd be funny if they were like no no we did the math and uh had to do, had to happen cory good potentially pro 9-11 <laughs> Hey, I can't prove he's not. Look, I mean, you have to see the outcome first. We don't know how this ends. Maybe That's not. True. Maybe 9/11 did have to happen because it made our generation realize they were lying. It was the ultimate. Uh... Those towers aren't even gone. They weren't <laughs> even there to begin with. That's still my favorite theory. It, you know, it was the first time they'd been in our system. Um, they could conceivably then travel all the way back in time and start tinkering with our timeline and genetics. Okay, so it does have effects. They could actually be our ancient aliens. All right. It's a hard thing to wrap your mind around. Time sure is. Um, is something that they can jump around in and play with very easily. So what's happening is not only a galactic uh, type of thing, it, it's, it, it's a, a temple. Now, if both sides can time travel and shit, yes. doesn't that kind of make that null and void? Uh, I think we've talked about this uh, about a week or two ago, but yes, if both sides can time travel, that would give them sort of infinite opportunities to just undo what the other side did. So you think it yeah. would just be a constant loop of people going back and redoing shit until it turns out the way they want to. Yeah, that's what I would assume. So but then the other side would just go and do it again. Yeah, so at a certain point, it's like, what's the, what's the end game with that? The only thing I can think of is if they ascribe... Uh, or they, they subscribe to the uh, theory that there's multiple timelines, and, like, each time you travel back, you're generating a new timeline. 
but that I, seems... I guess, but wouldn't everybody have separated out by now to their own timelines? You would think so, but maybe they need to go to different timelines to get the result they want in order... Fuck if I know. <laughs> it seems like they're really trampling over the butterfly effect. There's a lot of problems when you involve time travel that no one seems to have uh, fully been able to remedy as of yet. I mean, I guess it's one of those things you don't know until you do it, right? Well, we're going to have to time travel. <laughs> right. So uh, that's one of the things that uh, is, is important is... I'm waiting to see his eyebrows crawling all over his face. I'm telling you, they're going to just come alive and crawl away. This group of extraterrestrials that have made these agreements with the deep state and doing all these kinds of genetic experiments and and, and that they are kind of like... Look what they did to me, eyebrows. (laughs) Or is he talking about something... Monsters. uh, a, A different group. I mean, maybe you can kind of elaborate between... You know, what he's talking about, this Galactic Federation making agreements with the U.S., the deep state. For genetic, yeah, Corey, elaborate on this other guy. <laughs> You'd definitely be in the know. With, <laughs> you know all this, right? Ex- human-looking extraterrestrials that most people associate as the good guys, you know, like they call them the Galactic Confederation or the... Um, you know, even this the one name, <laughs> yeah. They, they, got, one. they got all kinds of names. They got yeah. the uh, the Galactic Federation. They got the well, you know what I'm talking about, Corey. <laughs> they they got Miller, <laughs> cause cause Bud Light, Bud Light. So, uh, Doctor Michael Sala is a uh, he's not bringing a whole lot to the table at the moment. He, he is a a doctor of ineffective speech <laughs> so yeah. far. Uh, yeah, the only thing interesting about him is those eyebrows. And his choice of shirt. I kind of like it. It's like a pink denim thing going on. You know, I will say the Australians have had quite a lot of uh, alien activity in the news and whatnot in the last uh, few months. That seems to be a hot spot. I, it, I hope they invade Australia. If they're going to go someplace first, I want them to test it out in Australia because they're separated from us by enough space that I would feel more comfortable. I mean, I guess it's also because you got, like, the aboriginals and shit. Maybe they have some, like, mystic voodoo. Maybe they're communicating with the aliens. That would be interesting if it was just, like, the recompense for all the natives that just got genocided everywhere was, like, the aliens were like, no, we're only here for uh, the tribes. Well, if you think about it, like, Aztecs and shit were building pyramids, so it makes sense that they had theoretically contact with the aliens at some point. Although, what's it mean if they are, they're good with the Aztecs? Like, those motherfuckers was sacrificing babies and shit. You gotta do what you gotta do in order to build those pyramids. Maybe the aliens are very practical and cold-hearted about it. I don't know. Maybe it was necessary. If it works, I guess to keep doing it. But yeah, it, seemed to, it seemed to not work at a certain point. It seems a little satanic. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's only so long you can murder your own before the uh, whole tribe goes out. <laughs> it talked about the sphere being alliance, being part of... Uh a galactic federation or confederation. So maybe, you know, are, are we talking about different... What's the difference between a federation and a confederation? I have no fucking idea. That's a fantastic question. Uh, uh, I'm going to skip past that so we don't sound dumb. Yeah, <laughs> Slavery? different groups, and uh, you hear galactic federation a lot. Well, that could apply to many different groups, like, the, you know, the Spear Being Alliance. Um, they're a part of this... <clears throat> it's like a, they're like a galactic. Can we uh, get them to stop doing the thing where they say it, it can apply to all kinds of stuff? There's the sphere being alliance, and they do all kinds of stuff. Well, he made sure to get his plug in, and then he didn't have anywhere else to go for well, it. Well, typically when you say there's all kinds, the list involves more than one name. Look, there's <laughs> tons. There's mine, and, and then there's uh, other ones. There's a. Uh, <laughs> What's David's again? <laughs> sure. I guess that's the problem when you burn all your en- uh, your friends. Who who else does he have to plug? We're watching higher density realms and um, also looking after the lower density realms to make sure everything's being um, done according to cosmic law. And then we have lower level. There, these are like you know six seventh density beings, you know, very... All right, very quickly, the difference between a federation and a confederation. A confederation is most likely to feature three differences when contrasted with a federation. One, no real direct powers. Many confederal decisions are externalized by member state legislation. Two, 
Decisions on day-to-day matters are not taken by a simple majority, but by special majorities or even... Oh, now it's going to cut me off right before I get there. <laughs> All right. I like how I just talk shit on them for not being able to complete a list, and then I get a shitty link that won't let me complete my list. Scalar weapons. God damn it. All right, I'll find this while we let them talk. Evolved beings. Um, and then you go down to, you know, you know, fourth and fifth density beings, and... You know, those include, you know, anything from the reptilians to these tall Nordic races, um, you know, different types of beings that we lump into what we call the... Back on track, baby. Decisions on day-to-day matters are not taken by simple majority, but by special majorities or even by consensus or unanimity. What? Unanimity. Yeah, that's the word. <laughs> Feed over every member. Uh, and three, changes of the constitu- uh, Constitution... Usually a treaty require that word again that I can't unanimity. unanimity. There unanimity. we go. Yeah. Jesus Christ, I need to buy fucked on phonics. When I had um, to learn all the Tongan names, I got pretty good at that. <laughs> you just gotta say it all phonetically. Braves. Um there's a there's a whole assortment of these other types of beings that in and insectoids. Insectoids are extremely um into genetics that's all of their technology. i'm gonna be real if the insectoids are the aliens we get greeted by i'm gonna freak the fuck out you've been saying for literally years that you are convinced bugs are aliens yeah i don't think they're from here i think those are aliens they're self-replicating robots they're they're just probing the planet yeah this is uh you you've been on this bandwagon for for quite some time at this point i will die on this hill and if the aliens come down and it looks like fucking scyther i'm a squeal like a little girl and run away <laughs> I, i'm just gonna be real about it i hope they're clever enough that whoever we get first contact with is vaguely human or they gotta look like they look in the movies so we're less freaked out yeah if they're small i'm okay with it because i feel like i could beat the shit out of them like as long as i could kick that alien's ass i feel like i'm okay with it i ideally all right if aliens were to visit i want little green men aliens that's that would be my preferred introduction to the alien world that would be cool starting off with the classic yeah like they they look small they don't seem to be a threat i could go for some like hot aliens that'd be cool I've seen those ads on Pornhub. <laughs> Pornhub's not doing so well right now. Apparently, oh, really? they had too many illegal things. Ooh, like no, they just had to rechange their rules because under like, age illegal or trafficking. Yeah, shit like that. All sorts of stuff. I mean, that makes have, it hotter <laughs> when you just let everybody upload videos. Like, yeah, it's gonna get a little weird sometimes. Yeah, someone was bound to use a fake ID. Yeah. Whoopsie doodle. Just genetic manipulation. Even the ships they fly. So. And, you know, and they're a part of these little federations together, um, you know, along with... There's federations the within the federation? Double federation. Have, um, you know, agreements you know of convenience. he well. actually put together another sizzle reel for his, uh, I the, guess they're put... I, I think they're pitching it as a TV series. Uh-huh. But this is going to take a win- minute for them to flesh out, because it's getting... There's a lot of layers coming in here. And uh, we're only nine minutes in. <laughs> we're federations on top of federations. I I guess that's his one up. This dude's going to re- talk about the federations like, "Oh no, there's multiple federations." Well, perhaps I had misunderstood what he had said in previous videos. I was under the impression that all these entities were just part of one unified galactic federation with the exception of a few that were trying to uh destroy the earth or some shit. Yeah, I thought the whole point was that that was the like, whole point of like the, the had, sphere being alliance. Yeah, and, like they were bringing us into the group. There was the 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 good guys and the bad guys it was very clear we, uh, but now there's multiples within each one i don't know that sounds more like a united states of aliens than something that's a federation do you remember what the dorito head aliens were called no. i don't know that we've ever no. shown a uh oh fuck i gotta stop trying we just to do always things. called them the dorito headed aliens oh fuck did i just click off that video no that can't be I don't know. We can pause for a minute because yeah, that sun's a in a shitty spot. Okay. Okay, and we're back. All right. The The dangers of recording in an outdoor studio, the weather has decided to fight us on this, so... Sometimes the Lord giveth and sometimes the Lord bloweth things away. Yes, yeah, so we're going to uh, soldier onward, but if it gets too bad, we will stop this episode and 
record from a different location. Like pro-choice feminists, we will abort this if it's not <laughs> worth the time. These on screen, do you have the, the screen brought up? Yeah. These are the entities I was talking about before we were so rudely cut off by Mother Nature. These are uh, the Golden Triangle beings, or as Jay and I have dubbed them, the Dorito-headed aliens. I think it's more appropriate and accurate. And they looked, this is what they look like to me. They've always reminded me of this episode of The Simpsons. Oh, where, yeah. Where Mr. Burns, I think, look at the eyes. That's a, that's that's a pretty, pretty close. accurate. All right. But anyways, back to uh, whatever the fuck. Corey Good was talking about before we were so rudely interrupted by the fates. Because some of them have genetic, spiritual timeline agendas that conflict with other people in the Super Federation. And they sabotage. Sabotage. <laughs> sabotage. <laughs> he was a great baseball player in the early 1900s. Uh, sabotage and uh, Stan Musial were. Sabotage sounds like a Japanese name. It also kind of sounds like a rapper, like Sabotage. Yeah, that could work too. <laughs> like it's a not new a bad... school SoundCloud dude. It's not a bad rap name, actually. Have this super federation to help manage that and prevent chaos in all of these different systems because if chaos occurs, no one wins because the objective is ascension or evolution and uh, on, on a genetic level and also a consciousness level. Okay, so, so the super federation of these human looking groups that, that you. Uh, that you went to, that, that you actually, that was part of uh, your, your job description. And more recently, you said that you also went up there as, as that super federation was reconstituted. That's that's kind of like a superior body or a separate body to this galactic federation that uh, Professor Eshed's talking about, that, that he was knowledgeable. I, I believe so, because the super federation is more of like a governing body where they all come together like in a big Congress type of um, situation. And then they kind of act like their own little I like they're just going super federation. They really have just, uh, what's bigger than the federation? Super size. The they're, super federation. They're going with the McDonald's uh, menu theme. Yeah. They got the normal thing, and then they got medium, large, and super sized. Yeah, I mean, you could have at least, like, I would have gone with supreme federation. Yeah. That, uh, although supreme... I guess super is more Trumpy in though. Supreme also kind of has some, uh... Dog whistly. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's true. Connotations. We can, we're into the Super Federation, <laughs> folks. Well, not attending the meeting, but they have agreements that they come together and enforce. Instead okay. of open warfare in the skies, you know, ships coming in, destroying um, small civilizations to destroy their uh, genetic lineage so theirs will prosper or d spreading diseases, all of that type of thing. Uh, they try to manage that. In, in a way that's going to benefit all of the different groups. And um, <clears throat> eventually, um, the group being worked on is supposed to take over, like we are supposed to be doing. Ah, uh, so they were... That's very biblical. <laughs> as we get to hit with wind. It Speaking was very biblical. biblical. But I get... So they were... We were in training camp to become the next in line. I mean, that is very New Testament in that we're supposed to be the ones who take care of the planets and whatnot we as were, we take on the role of of uh, Christ and uh, caretaker of the planets. We were the galactic Kyrie Irving to the LeBron James. We were supposed to be up next. Although and, we must be shitty apprentices if we're not even ready to, like, reveal everything. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a fair point. You would think... Because it seems to be a pretty common theme is, like, uh, you're not ready yet. It's like, well, you... You seem to be teaching us some shit, so... It's the ultimate cop-out, because they can just keep saying, like, well, you're not going to get this. Oh, I think the, the laptop, the internet... <laughs> I think the wind literally just changed the monitor. <laughs> we are broadcasting from... Inside of a hurricane. <laughs> Inside of, This is how dedicated we are. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. You we, can't stop this. This we, is just good. This is good material now. <laughs> this is fucking insane. This is, this is going to be our commercial. We just going to ride this out? We're troopers. We can ride this out. You can't blow us away. We're not the three little pigs. We have to turn up his audio to be over the, uh, the, the wind. One of the last meetings I went to, the... ET Federation had basically been told they were disbanding and that uh, humanity was taking over their own evolution as far as... So that was uh, the one I... Interesting. 
that was the one I had talked about where he said the blue chickens and I think the Dorito heads mm -hmm. were leaving and putting humans in charge. That's what I had recalled is they were allowing us to ascend to the next level. It was finally their time to retire. Yeah. And consciousness, um, you know, religion, consciousness, all of that, it wasn't going to be manipulated by outside forces anymore for the first time. So we're going through the process of having that fully handed over to us. So I think that we're getting to a point to where they're going to be willing to share their existence, the ETs that we're talking about openly, you know, pretty soon. But they definitely want to acclimate us and don't want it to happen on our timetable. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty consistent with what uh, Professor Esche had said, that uh, the Galactic Federation uh, uh, are looking at revealing themselves and that we haven't quite reached the point yet. No one ever specifies exactly what the point is. No, what <laughs> what we're supposed to do exactly before they come down. They always usually say, like, more peaceful and whatnot, but... From what I can tell, as I get covered in leaves, is that we are supposed to increase our vibrational state by eating pure and uh, meditating and loving one another. I gotta eat a plant-based diet? Yeah, or Fuck else you that. won't meet aliens. Well, I don't want to meet those aliens. Those aliens sound pretty, pretty gay. Yeah, I don't want to meet vegan aliens. Yeah, <laughs> those cows are delicious. They don't get to, if they come down and tell me they don't eat meat, I'm gonna ask them if they have anything that tastes good on their planet. Because if they <laughs> haven't had a steak yet, I might be able to change their minds. Maybe they just uh, operate via photosynthesis. I had a roommate from Nepal my freshman year of college who had never had a steak before. That's fucking insane. And I <laughs> made him his first ever steak, and he covered it in ketchup. He died of sepsis. <laughs> he, he cut it open, and it was like a medium well, so it was a little pink. And mm -hmm. he's like, is this supposed to be blood? And I was like, <laughs> no, you're fine, man. You can eat it like that. He's like, are you sure? I was like, yeah, you're good. You're good. Good. So he covered it in ketchup and ate it. Oh, <laughs> Certain cultures do just burn the shit out of a steak. Like, I know my, uh, my dad's side of the family is Jewish, and my dad talked about how until he was like 20, he had never had a steak that wasn't well done. Like, they would just, they would, because <laughs> part of the thing is you have to cook it until all the blood's gone. Yeah, I mean, well, So it was just dry, chewy, it was like beef jerky. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have refrigeration, like, yeah, that's how you would get rid of all the, the uh, bacteria and whatnot. But my favorite part is this kid would also just leave uh, raw chicken on the counter. As, like, a voodoo ritual? like No, he would just, like, leave it there for, like, like all day and, like, wouldn't refrigerate it. Bacteria doesn't exist in Nepal. Oh, it was, it horrified me. I was like, oh my God, he's going to die. Because <laughs> sometimes it's, salmonella. it smelled terrible. And I was like, yeah, he's going to, he's going to die. But I guess that's why he asked why there was blood, because uh, that would kill you <laughs> if you leave that chicken a little raw. So do you, do you think this is all consistent with what you learned about, you know, the, uh, the kind of like uh, reconstituting of the uh, super federation that, that you knew of, and now humanity is, is in charge? Is, are we talking about the same process or are these parallel processes? It sounds like the same process and, in a way, parallel processes. <clears throat> he mentions uh, that humans are working with some of these extraterrestrials on bases on Mars. Uh, but, you know, we know that they're... So they are they working are. with <clears throat> us, though. Yeah, yeah, they are working with us. But now, uh, these ones, the more I read about this particular case, it seems like they are Mars-based. Okay, so they're what, under under the surface, I would assume? They'd have to be, because we have, like, rovers on Mars, you would think they would have. But, of course, the government would be in on it, man, so oh. they'd just be hiding it from us. We got, like, Google and shit. You can look at it. <laughs> not not the parts that I want you to see. But, like, yeah, they're already working with us, so are, do you think we're the only ones trying to get into the Federation where they're like, all right, these motherfuckers are a little too crazy. We're going to have to take this slow. Because I got a feeling most of the other... Species probably, uh, or races probably got in there pretty easy. Seems like we're the ones they've had some hesitations about. Well, more importantly, uh, look at Corey Good's hands right now. The man, oh, he took his gloves he, off. He took, he heard us making fun of him. And, uh, Damn it. Oh, you didn't know this is recording in the past. I want Corey to send me those gloves. I'll frame them. They were pretty, he's I mean, they were pretty good, but that they are maybe re he realized he was inside. On the moon and Mars. Um, and, and other places up to a smaller Oh, degree, so they are on the moon and Mars. Well, if you're going to be on so, one, you might as well be um, on both. The fact that a mainstream person, like the, like the one we're talking about, would talk about humans and ETs sharing a base <clears throat> on Mars, that just opens 
up the conversation for the public on all the information you and I've been sharing the last, you know, five or more years. Exactly. Yes. I mean, he actually did say American astronauts are up there working with extraterrestrials. So that's really acknowledging that there's a, a secret space program uh, with bases on Mars and that uh, that this secret space program. That dude looks like he took too many Xanax. Experiments with extraterrestrials. <laughs> Mars is one of the places. Our own opinion, of course. Oh, well, from personal experience, I know what my eyes look like after about two of them. And either that or he's just got severe lazy eyes. As a man on two of them at this moment, I would agree. I, I do oh, feel... Give me my own camera. The, the people can do a judgment. Let me... Now back. Back to the video. Okay. Back to the video. Back to me. <laughs> no, I'm fucking... <laughs> no, cause he's, but he's also got the squishy eye on one side. Yeah, kind of the Bell's palsy look. Yeah, so I can't tell if that's just because he's off his end or if he just uh, got, like, hit in the face. I'm going to pretend... He's off. He's off the pills. It makes it way more fun. It is. And that he was privy to this knowledge in his official capacity. And that matches with... I uh, need him to escape those eyebrows. How, how the <laughs> NRO and the CIA... I have extreme anxiety about my gigantic fucking eyebrows. I would need Xanax to cope with those motherfuckers. That could be the easiest fit. Like, can't you just... Zzz, like, buzz... Buzz maybe, cut? Maybe he looks really, really, like, a Nazi when he does that. Or he looks... Like he's albino, his eyebrows are it's to very, him what Samson's hair was to him. I it, would I would do the Lady Gaga and I would just shave him off and then draw it on with like a liner, or a sharpie, or something. Have you seen the people who get uh, tattoos of their their eyebrows? Like people who uh, usually tweakers who have lost uh, all their hair. Oh, on that the makes face. sense. Yeah, they'll, they'll like tattoo it's them. It's the in. fake teeth of of eyebrows. Yeah. I along with the NSA, have been part of this kind of like deep state, organized secret space deep program. Deep state. And I, I think he would know about that because he was handling the Israeli side of it because uh, you know, the Mossad and Israel's uh, Defense Force and their, and their Space Institute handling their spy satellites, all of that was all part of this kind of overall coordination. Do you think the, and- the Jews were involved before or after World War II? Uh, with what? With with this particular plan because they seem to be using Israel as the one of the bases of operation so it have to be after world war 2 in my opinion i think i think that makes the most sense as far as something can make sense in this realm is that all right jews chosen people don't uh-huh. have their own land get uh-huh. fucked over by the holocaust uh-huh or maybe not according to that one episode we did a few you weeks know, ago some people have some thoughts <laughs> everyone's thoughts are perfectly valid no uh it would make sense that once they assemble into a super jew consortium that they would then be able to sort of carry out the actions all right so which this they is, deem fit so this is very biblical but the only reason i could really see why they would be the base of operations is because if you bring together the three tribes of Abraham, you finally unite all the religions. I am Which getting, is kind of what's going on in the Middle East at I the know, moment. I know. I'm getting increasingly concerned about that, because isn't that like one of the surefire signs that the end times are coming, is peace in the Middle East? It's never a good sign, surprisingly. Americans uh, for you know, not only conducting spy or espionage over the Middle East, but also monitoring deep state traffic and obviously keeping up to speed with what the extraterrestrials are doing. Yes, and <clears throat> I believe this is all a part of an acclimation process. You know, we've had, um, you know, Fox News and other uh, media showing the Tic Tac UFO. Fox News sucks. Fox News. To investigate yeah, why is he citing Fox News? I and, thought he had uh, uh, some pretty big issues with those fellas. Uh, maybe he hasn't abandoned ship yet. Maybe he's still hoping to get on. I would respect him more if that was the case, where, like, when things didn't go his way, he didn't think that that entire organization was against him. Yeah. They just happened to disagree. Yeah. That's, that's a more respectable thing to do. It's a difference of opinion. Covered it in a serious way. Oh, yeah, and also have, wouldn't have him on. You know, a fairly high-ranking, <laughs> credible person from one of our allied countries that is making even larger statements that are that's going to open up the conversation. Because, <clears throat> I mean, how many people in the mainstream saw that, and after they chuckled a little bit, you know, saw the news article, they went through and they read it and they started highlighting Galactic Federation and Googling it. And then all of these other little keywords. And then they're finding their way to our work, our community, to 
you know, where we're releasing this information. Um, I mean, this is this has gone somewhat viral, and uh, it's really an opportunity to. That, Has it gone viral? Uh, How many I views mean, we got on this video? I mean, from what I read on Twitter when it popped off, it was mostly people making fun of it. And <laughs> well, a lot of good reason. And a lot of people just making the same joke about how the most unbelievable line in this story is that Donald Trump kept a secret. <laughs> or the powers that be. Literally, that was like half the comments. But it's an opportunity for Twitter is not the most creative when it comes to uh, punchlines. It was so funny seeing so many people be like, oh, this is going to kill. By just the way, typing this, the, same, the same thing. This is working pretty well in terms of cutting off uh, the mic. I, don't I actually know. think yours might be hitting your mic. Fuck. I ruined everything. Does that sound fine? Yeah, fine I mean, enough. It's all right. To jump in on the PR around it and uh, show everybody that there's a lot more information. Your mic looks like it's hiding from the Nazis. Right. <laughs> it's so got a as they're, the they're inspecting the fucking is, attic. You know, is this it's uh, the Anne Frank of mics. <laughs> <laughs> genuinely part of the disclosure process, of the awakening process, or is this a distraction to kind of like get people's attention away from... Why the fuck uh, are you the, asking the, the political me? political turmoil in the US and how things are unraveling. Yeah, this guy has come on and done nothing but ask you questions. Know, I had been warning for years... Yeah, I thought that Corey was going to be leading the interview. Me too. That everything's about to be exposed about, you know... The, the cabal, what's been going on on the planet. Oh, you've that been saying this for a years. Big announcement about <clears throat> Antarctica. Or saying that for years. Secret space program to occur. So, oh, well, it's got to be coming. End, it could very Any could day be now. A distraction. But at the same time, it, it could also be a, just a part of this drip drip disclosure that they have that they've been planning to release, you know, information over a long period of time. You know, I mean, they're, you're starting to see news articles about. Uh, you know, just talking about time travel, it's possible, or seeding our consciousness with that, because when we... I think I, technology I, that's, that's a generous way to uh, describe that article. I know which one he's talking about. Yeah, there's there's a million articles a year about how things could theoretically be possible with advancements in technology. Well, I, I think I know exactly what he's talking about. There's an article, I forget the name of the exact particle, but it uh, shoots like in the earth one way and comes out the other way and could potentially reverse its time, but it's in that article itself it's like there's no way to actually make anything that could function <laughs> like this it's just an interesting thing that happens it's cool yeah it's just weird shit i'm or space force and, and other groups are using now um it, it's it becomes there are too many temporal anomalies that occur when you're observing the op, uh, operation of these craft for you not to need to have that programming you need to have your mind expanded a little bit to understand that this time travel stuff is real and this is kind of how it works and then, oh, these craft that we release, you notice how they flutter from here to there and it looks like they're in two places at once? You know, well, you know, that has to do with some of the temporal effects that occur. And, you know, it'll, it'll sink in a lot easier. Would a time action. machine need to right, actually okay. go off well, the ground? Know that's, uh... You mean, like, take off? Yeah, like, would a time machine actually move? Well, from my extensive research on watching time travel movies, I think for the most part they stay on the ground. Right? They don't need to... I mean, I guess maybe it's just like they, the aliens are so advanced. It's like the all-terrain vehicle. It, it can travel through time, space, water, air, whatever you want. It's the fucking rock and chop of a uh, <laughs> spacecraft. <laughs> Unless they want to go like the the Superman route, where he flies back in time so fast, or he like flies around the That's, earth so fast yeah, he goes back in time. If he flies backwards fast enough, he reverses time. Because that is possible. Like people in space <laughs> do technically get an extra fractions of some seconds or some shit so they could argue that if they traveled at a high enough speed so if you just like spin fast enough you just spin into the past and that's what we're about to do right now uh, you know? right. <laughs> just spin around a circle and throw up on a laptop and lose the whole episode david does always say that if you spin things fast enough that's how you get the anti-gravity and some people have that uh, this is all a distraction, but but I think it's it's really just, just also part of the awakening process. Um, as the deep he looks state, like he's nodding um, off, but fighting it, it. <laughs> has to play all its cards. You know, this is one of the big cards it's been holding back for, for decades now, and now it's being played. And, and maybe part of the rationale is a distraction uh, from the other stuff going on, but at the same time, you know, we, I think we can take this as a kind of gift in a way to you know to help awaken humanity to the big picture. Because I've always thought as, as more and more people start to look to space and mm -hmm. look for answers to a lot of questions, UFOs, what's happening on the other other planets and so forth, secret space programs, that our consciousness is going to expand. It's just, you know, 
they are speaking incredible vague. I was about to say vague terms. They are just kind of uh, saying what the article said. Plus, <laughs> they just the consciousness added in. Yeah, they just add in the consciousness, like you uh, send in order to also reach that level. And also, the like expand your consciousness. I've always felt like you got you got to give me a little more specific than that because that doesn't really mean anything. Well, functionally. here's the problem. If they gave you specific instructions and then you did those and carried them out to a T and then still nothing happened, mm -hmm. you could blame them. But if they give you intentionally uh, obtuse instructions with no real clear linear path towards achieving yeah. it, they can just blame you for fucking it up. Yeah. It's not their fault you're too stupid to achieve enlightenment. I feel like that's that's like my new goal for the UFO community is like, I don't need you to give me hard evidence. I just want a few things fleshed out a little so I can understand them better. Because expanding consciousness could literally mean a trillion different things. I mean, their catch-all seems to be expand or, or uh, increase your vibration level. That seems to be what they're going with. By yeah. eating healthier and all that I nonsense. Can at, I at least understand that one mostly because it just revolves around the chakras. Yeah. So at least I can put together what they're talking about, but expand your consciousness. It, expand it into what? Does someone in your mom's yoga studio do chakra healings? I want, I want oh, I my, got some books on chakras. I want my chakras healed. I yeah, want oh. that thing where they put, like, stones over all your chakras. Oh, she knows how to align all the chakras. All right, I need a chakra aligner. That's why her zen is on fire. <laughs> it's just inevitable when you start to think outside of our planetary sphere, consciousness expands. So that's a good thing, even if the deep state is trying to roll this out as part of a distraction. It's still a positive thing. Speaking of distractions, this... Do we do we want to listen back for a second to see how much of this wind is being picked up on Mike? It's it, probably gonna be a pretty good amount. You want to check? I don't want to put out a terrible audio quality. Let's pause yeah. for a second yeah, and see. Pause. We're good. Sorry about that, folks. We had to uh, pivot to a different recording location because of how bad the weather was outside. It was uh, it was getting pretty rough, yeah. So we're on uh, our Christmas set here, but without further ado, let's get back into this news, time travel, the consciousness of humanity has been seeded already for more and they, they can bring in a lot of interesting concepts through science fiction and, and other methods so i think uh, keeping our eyes on on the media is, is going to help us kind of foresee what's about to come <clears throat> now that's it, they always talk about how the media is lying right uh well actually what i was going to say is he's more pointing to their normal line of sci-fi is actually real. well it's real and sometimes it's just setting us up for disclosure which i assume is why he's trying to push his tv show and his graphic novel because he believes uh sci-fi is the way to uh disclosure and a sweet uh tv deal i would love to know what their criteria are for when mainstream media is giving you the truth versus lying because it seems like the criteria is just when they're saying something we like you should um, listen to them. Well, once again, Corey and David are a little unique in that they take TV seriously and literally. So they tend to always believe, like, no, that's real tech they're showing you. They just want you to think it's CGI. Well, they have to have been talking about fake news, though. Like, they can't trust. Oh, he talks about it all the time, but that's just CNN. That's what I mean, though. Like, I don't, nah, it doesn't matter. You can, you can, uh, you know, watch their moves and they're, and a move they make like that will kind of give away their timing or what they're planning on doing next. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to ask you about one of the things that uh, Professor Eshed said that I thought was really interesting. And, and maybe you've talked about it in the past, but I didn't quite, maybe I didn't appreciate it at the time. But but he said that um, the Galactic Federation uh, was was on the verge of revealing itself uh, through the Trump administration or that Trump was getting ready to reveal its existence. But then it said, no, hold on, uh, humanity isn't quite there yet. Technologically, we aren't at that sufficient level. So it brings up this whole question of, you know, type one, type two, type three civilizations, the Kardashev scale. And as far as I know, the, the breakaway civilization with all the advanced tech is probably, you know, type 1.1 or type 1.2, something like that. Whereas we, in the using open source scientific data, um, you know, Michio Kaku said that we are <laughs> Jesus at Christ, that's a huge pause there. So we're not yet a type one civilization. You know, globally, yeah. So the Galactic Federation said, 
well, we, we need to be closer to a type, type one, one sounds like diabetes. Before they reveal themselves. This is, I mean, they're, they're just setting it up so you can never achieve what uh, would be necessary for them to reveal the truth to you. Yeah, it pretty much. Although I was going to say, uh, Alex Jones on the Tim Pool episode the other day, uh, he did pretty much, he didn't go into it, but he said, you know, secret space uh, program, space force and all that uh, exists. He didn't extrapolate, but uh, he seemed to at least mention it. That's nice to see Alex getting back involved with the aliens, but this this really does seem like a con man's thing in yeah. order to, because when ever in the future are we going to have everyone on a quote unquote high enough vibrational frequency in order for the well, aliens to show up? So uh, the higher side chats guy, I'm blanking on his name. Greg Carlwood. Greg Carlwood actually had had uh, Dr. Greer on a little while back. Mm. And had a bit of a tense moment with Dr. Greer. Which is funny because Greg is just like your typical happy-go-lucky stoner dude. It was literally the first time I'd heard him get a little confrontational. But uh, (laughs) Greer was going along the same lines of, you know, we're not emotionally and consciously ready yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Greg was just like, well, can they help us a little bit? Because uh, we kind of need it. (laughs) We're in a bit of a bind. But then Dr. Greer would be like, well, they don't want to like intervene because that would, I don't know, free will and whatever. Uh, but he was also like, it would only take 1% of the human population to do it. And he's like, really? Greg was like, really? Because uh, <laughs> if it's only 1%, they should just speak up because I think we can get it. I, Which was valid. Yeah. And eventually it got to the point where Greg had to be like, oh, I'm not trying to like attack you, Dr. Greer. I'm just, I'm concerned that they are missing out on an opportunity to help us and might ruin it and, uh, by consequence. Yes, they, they set these sort of uh, vague goals that really... There's no way you could possibly measure, like, there's no, how are you going to tell when 1% of the population is enlightened? I don't uh, <laughs> I would assume they have a, like, like a, a test. Like a Gallup poll, it's, <laughs> and then the aliens show up? It's probably like the IQ test, I would assume. Is, is that part of the normal process for extraterrestrials making open contact, that society has to be closer to a type 1 status? Uh, <clears throat> not that I've observed, and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, if we, we were you just and me both. I'm glad he's being honest. Live news announcement away from being a type one civilization. Oh, you know, it's they just have to reveal it to us. So the technology is there. We have the technology to go and visit these ETs at their home planet. Under that we already were. Position. Yeah, so I think we are. more of what needs to catch up is the consciousness. And right now, we're you know in the United States. Look, we're on the verge of an open civil war. We're you know, there's been yeah, shadow civil war. Might be a bit years. hyperbolic, yeah. but okay. All of these different countries. It's a Twitter every... civil war. <laughs> the ETs know that this is all a part. That's going to be our new battle of the bulge. The better <laughs> the Twitter hashtag battle. Cosmic energy. I think the meme war was in 2015. The web builds up. It begins to affect our consciousness, and everyone starts having end time madness. Like, I do wonder if and he means consciousness in the literal sense yeah. that, like, people literally <laughs> need to become conscious that aliens exist. I can't tell if he's actually trying to be metaphysical or if he's just being very literal and not making it clear. No, I th- I I get the impression that he means it in like a new agey sense. Like you gotta elevate your consciousness, man. You yeah, I really reach that next level. I'd really like a little more instruction. You know, like if you told me how to paint and you were like, "Here are the colors, man." Like, you just got to put them on the canvas. I just like okay, and it would look <laughs> like shit. But if you like taught me how to paint i'd probably get pretty good at it someone with direct contact with the alien should be able to better explain how it is we go about getting to where they want us to be well and if we're getting this close to go time like shouldn't they get the green light to start like really letting the floodgates loose what you know how in uh in like pharmaceuticals though they'll sometimes like emergency pass something for end of life trials like a cancer drug or something they just kind of push it through yeah. in order for people to get access yeah maybe the aliens can do something like that with uh, saving the world maybe this is kind of an end of life situation if it plays out the way they're talking about maybe fast track this one look i get that this is supposed to be a controlled experiment but if uh my experiment was on the verge of exploding i'd probably step <laughs> in yeah, if the experiment is uh, going to completely disappear, you got to do something to preserve it. Well, and how much more data do they really need? And it builds up and builds up until the sun has this micronova. 
and then it sort of resets and <sighs> everyone at after that time are all connected in a, in a in a way that we've never been really connected before that, see that would be an interesting theory of time of travel to me is if instead of different universes layered on top of each other you could have different time periods layering on top of each other mm -hmm. so that they're technically not happening linear linearly at the same time but concurrently in a sense so just almost on different levels like layers of a rock yeah because like then because then i could see you going back and forth between them a little easier like going from shore to shore right if they are waiting for us to you know <clears throat> that change they're waiting for us to make um you know we already have you know the type suck our dicks civilization <laughs> technologies and we are manufacturing them and actually trading them to other solar systems now here's the so, real question you know, i really think that is if somehow the donald was the man responsible for getting this information disclosed Speak of the devil hold on before you continue oh, okay along those lines uh there was a tweet Earlier there was a today, tweet. There existed a tweet. All right. So uh, Todd Starnes, who's some sort of journalist, tweeted this at Trump earlier today. At this point, at real Donald Trump should declassify everything. Everything. And Trump responded, I have been doing this. I agree. Hell yeah. So take of that what you will. But uh, what, what point were you? Uh, I was just going to say, like, if he actually is the one who... Is responsible. Well, no, is responsible for disclosure and uh -huh. potentially even first contact of some sort. Will the liberals assume the aliens are racist <laughs> because they sided with Trump? Yeah, like, will that be a real quandary from them? Because a lot of the uh, alien people, well, at least used to be lefties. For some reason, they all fucking went to MAGA side. But I, how do they handle that? Because if everything Trump related has been, I mean, they're not even happy about the Middle East not blowing itself up. You know how they're going to be able to pull it off? Is they're going to be able to claim like the, I have a black friend excuse? Because they, they've been apparently talking with the Jews, right? So <laughs> yeah. they're going to be able to like, well, we've been communicating with that minority. So we, we clearly can't be bad people. That's true. But I don't think that'll be enough for some of them. I think AOC is still going to be like, I'm not making any deals with them. I hope someone shuts down her Twitter just... Uh, no, nah, I want I want to see her blow everything up. It's so... a uh, uh, Correction, I don't hate her Twitter. I hate how often I have to read about her Twitter. Yeah, that is really one of the, the things that's plagued journalism is when they decided to report on... Her tweeting is not worthy of an article. No. It, unless she tweets like, I'm going to fight for World War III. Yeah, now... Or Donald, I'm trying to kill minorities. Like Donald Trump tweeting out that we're going to try to nuke a hurricane. Like... Yeah. That's that, awesome. That's worthy of a story. But yeah. for the most part, her, her fucking millennial clapbacks don't deserve... Uh, you, you don't want to watch her uh, Twitch stream whatever fucking game that was? No, I don't want to see Animal Crossing AOC and then a bunch of people commenting like Slay Queen. And, now, it would, it would be rad if she was like just getting trashed while playing these video games. Just, if fuck this goddamn, I'm going to get and watch... <laughs> like that I could relate to. You know... Now, maybe technologically, we don't have an understanding of the correct laws of physics, you know, the electroplasmic physics, the way the universe works. And the oh, of course. Ties in, you know, that stupid is Einstein. The physics is always way. wrong with but these as guys. Far as like a physical technology. Einstein must be so mad. Travel, what a dumbass. <laughs> uh, energy and matter. Uh, we, we have a lot of those abilities now. Right. Where okay, are so they? they from yeah, don't doesn't the military Bitcoin. already know how to make these? How do how is he saying we don't know? I mean, yeah, he's been to fucking space in a weird blue orb. Well, we have the SSP. Like, obviously, they got some cool ships and craft. I would assume they're using anti gravity. Maybe they they lost their budget and they can't afford any super secret space craft. It was pandemic layoffs. Yeah, they, they, had, uh, to, they had to cut back. <laughs> Everybody's Girls been furloughed. You know, they look at our planet, and even though we have a breakaway civilization, hoarding a lot of these advanced technologies, you know, they're not going to say, "Well, that planet is like type zero point seven or something." Or they're going to judge us from the advanced technologies that are being used, even if it's just by a small elite group ensconced in these classified programs. That the extraterrestrials will look at all, at all of that and say, "Well, technologically, this this planet is at a type one status already." Just that most 
people on the planet's surface don't have access to those technologies because they are being hoarded by the deep state. I do so, wonder so what, what tech they would come down and be like, yo, you guys in invented this? This is this is pretty cool. How are the deep state hoarding the technology if Core is in a program that utilizes the technology? Well, because they kick them out after 20 years and wipe their brain. <laughs> it just, it doesn't quite, uh, it doesn't flow properly for me. Well, this is the issue when it gets a little too grandiose. And I get that he's probably trying to flesh it out because they want to do a TV show. Uh, but yeah, when it gets this over the top, it gets difficult to string it together in a reasonable fashion. You start having plot holes. A whole bunch of them. Professor Ishid said that the Galactic Federation is waiting for us to catch up. You, you think that's kind of like disinformation? Is that just a, a new agenda? Is he pushing an agenda? You know, I mean, that could be his understanding based on what they were saying in the programs, you know, but I mean, but, but overall it has to make you wonder, are these ETs the amoral ones that I had talked about, or are they, you know, the angelic ones? Well, they, if they're waiting for us to, I mean, it, it just doesn't sound like they're interacting with us in a way of angelic beings. Now, a lot of these wouldn't you know in these galactic <laughs> wouldn't you be the guy negative, they're talking to amoral you I mean, would assume he'd at know, least have some sources kind of like a clinical uh you know scientists doing a cl clinical study and they're not getting you know emotionally attached to us they come in you know they, they pick you up you know give you an injection check you out make some notes put you down you know just like we would a lab rat so um they're not necessarily you know but i want to be the lab rat that gets addicted to coke <laughs> so it's or whatever alien drugs they yeah. have so is he saying that like there's a a spy representing the actual federation no. and it might be an evil one? I think what he's implying is that we're unclear on whether or not the race that has been in contact with us is actually good or just sort of pretending to be good. Oh so god. Wolf the, wolf in sheep's clothing kind of thing. The Donald's been played by another dictator. Yeah, a gray and demon's clothing. God damn it, they told him he was going to get a Trump hotel on <laughs> Mars. This beings picking me up, jabbing me, holding me in this area against my will. Kind of just it, sounds like the know, military, it's not really. See this ET as being a positive being, but the ET, the, a lot of the ETs in this this galactic federation that do all these genetic experiments, they see themselves as sort of like amoral um, scientists. Isn't that how all scientists are supposed to be? They see themselves as amoral scientists. Isn't that why most like doctors and shit are technically psychopathic because they can separate morals from what they're doing i mean you kind of have to okay. yeah that's what i mean like it's it's a required trait yeah it's weird that they don't see themselves i could see being a neutral person on it but to think that they're potentially bad is it you would think they would change their tactics if they saw what they were doing to be well Immoral, I guess, not amoral, but... I mean, I suppose they just assume it's the cost of science. One of the things he pointed out in his interview that uh, you know, there the, the are these experiments that are happening uh, between the US and the extraterrestrials as, as part of these agreements. Now, the, the, the first, he didn't actually specify you know, what agreements or when they, how many agreements there are and all of that. Uh, but as far as I know, the, the first agreement happened in 1955 at Holloman Air Force Base where Eisenhower secretly met with representatives of, you know, either it was the German Antarctic program or extraterrestrials or a combination of the two. Uh, you know, that's kind of like still not clear, but that's the first set of agreements that I know of. I mean, well, yeah, there are definitely agreements prior to that. Um, I was going to say, what about Majestic remember, 12? And uh, who was it? Was it a <clears throat> Truman who met with uh, the aliens, supposedly? I don't remember who it was, but they definitely had... Or, uh, or was it Eisenhower? I think it was in the 50s. I think it was Eisenhower. They definitely met with Because that was when... Allegedly. Well, that was when they had the incident when all the craft went over the White House and freaked everybody out. Right. Yeah, that was when I think they had the supposed meeting with uh, Eisenhower. So I think Majestic 12 was kind of the original agreement at least in terms of u.s isn't cory part of uh, majestic 12 uh or... i think majestic 12 was what this became the secret space program oh okay who you know was during world war during world war ii was a conscientious objector went into this program to where they were giving them giving them viruses and wartime you know diseases and then coming up with treatments well i'm told that this 
experiment also entailed that the viruses they were giving them had little things that turned on and turned off genes. It's and impressive that he's working body, this back around to the COVID offspring, vaccine. You know, going down to my dad. And, I mean, and, once again, you can pause it, but he's so, he's definitely ironed out his ability to explain the story. Unfortunately, he does it in a tediously boring fashion. Yeah, the <laughs> this other dude, Jenny McCarthy, I think we may have underrated because <laughs> that conversation was relatively entertaining. This other dude is kind of just like, asking Corey questions that he obviously doesn't have the answer to. I don't think we underrated Jenny. I think this guy just sucks that much. He's that bad. He's <laughs> this like guy that uh fucking blows. He's like that one uh, Little League World Series announcer they always used to roll out of the crypt. <laughs> yes, every year uh in the Little League World Series they they bring back this one announcer who's like a probably mid 80s yeah, year at old least. man. Retired. Now he was a retired college coach, but he's like yeah, 85. He's borderline senile and he is the least entertaining announcer oh my god the poor dude in existence yeah the poor dude announcing with him would just have to constantly like reel him back in because that old dude would just start talking about shit that had nothing to do with anything he goes on uh bill walton-esque tangents without the ability to tie it back around into what's actually going on yeah and it's not actually funny it's kind of like uh sitting in a nursing home watching a baseball game that's ac- like, that's what it felt like for me actually friday is mashed potato day at the home and yeah, yeah i struck out babe ruth <laughs> hold on we're gonna have to pause for a minute okay i'm a fan of this pause screen it- <laughs> It looks like Corey Good doing an impression, like when old white guy does an impression of what he thinks a rapper looks like. <laughs> so, what uh, up, kids? Yeah, here's here's uh, Corey Mac here to kick some new flavor in your ear. It's Corey Good vibes, bro. <laughs> you know that Craig Mac joined a cult, the the flavor in your ear guy. What cult? Uh, it was some random like Baptist minister cult uh, in the middle, of, like Alabama or some shit. What was weird about him outside Baptist? Uh, the, the minister got popped for diddling kids and they lived in the middle of, like they lived on a compound. It was one of those things where you give up all your possessions to the, uh, uh the okay. head. Okay. So it was just very fundamentalist. That's not really a cult. Yeah. It, it was, uh, so Craig Mack lived out his final years in like a prison type system, basically sleeping in a commune and they died at like 46, even though he looked like he was 70. I mean, that sounds about right for how his story should end. He got fucked by Diddy. He he really Diddy? got fucked by Bad Boy. Yeah. <laughs> well, Flavor in Your Ear was like a huge song. That yeah, was, that was I mean, a that gigantic was, song. Well, and then Biggie. And then Biggie came along, yeah. and that was it. And yeah. then Craig Mack got pushed to the side. That um, was your rap history lesson <laughs> for today. Let's, let's get back to Corey Good. Just genetic manipulation before genes were ever really announced in, I think, the 50s. Um, so how were they editing, knowing how to edit your DNA <laughs> using could, a virus? Oh, he was doing the Mr. Burns hand thing. Well, it's because they were working with a Nordic group and this Nordic group was working with them to, um, you know, you think Nordics have white privilege, to <laughs> alien white privilege to fight. Also, the, can I call myself Nordic thing. instead of white? Cause that sounds cooler. I think Nordic actually makes you sound more racist. I mean, uh, maybe, but at least it's cooler than white. Nordic has a little, like, tinge of white pride to it. It's uh, It's got a little bit of the far-right Nazi in it. It, it is in yeah, Europe. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little too Iron Crossy. <laughs> that they considered negative. So this goes back, you know, to the 40s, to the 30s. Um, there have been... Uh, you know, the what happened to the other the guy that States was on this? Founded, you know, the- he uh, <laughs> hung himself because Corey wouldn't give him an answer. I can't say I blame him. I think our, our internet just hung itself. God damn it. Let's uh, tech support live on air. Oh, it's connected to the goddamn wrong Wi-Fi again. No, we're just going to record our call with IT. <laughs> I think Duncan Trussell did that in episode once. It was just, it was like a four hour episode. It was him and Johnny Pemberton and they were just on hold with AT&T internet for pretty much the entire episode. I mean, they'll do that to you. They definitely will. I've had AT&T twice when I was living in my apartment in Stockton, just not show up to install the internet on the day they said, 
Eh, you know, they tried. So it was like, make sure to stay in your house and, and we'll be there. And then they just never showed up. We'll be there between nine and five in the next two to four weeks. There was discussions. Yeah, some of the founding fathers discussed that, you know, there were unearthly beings that were involved. Um, you know, I would say that there would have to have possibly, you know, been an agreement. even. Bookshelf back. is a little sparse. <laughs> well, that's a really interesting. That's an ex. All right, I'll wait until he cuts back helping, to his own thing. But that's uh, an excellent point. Is experiments. He's trying. Them. He's trying to seem well read by having the bookshelf in the back, and all he's got in it are like fucking Lego sets. I mean, I'm sure he was probably just trying to plug something. I'm sure that book is in some way related to him. When it cuts he's, back to him, let's see if we can figure out yeah. what what book is that. Uh, something red. Yeah, something red. It's I have no the, idea. the graphic novel of Red Dawn. Program Could be his graphic novel. Race. They came and they told us, well, you know, according the way the mechanics of your solar system work, uh, there's like a 20 year kind of little bandwidth that you can use. Everything's 20 uh, years know, with him. Exploit, he likes round numbers. <laughs> to create time temporal bubbles that you can bring people from all different times into. And he's really going you know, hard on the time problems. travel angle and as of late. They've done it in many different solar systems. Well, and, uh, now that someone else is talking about the Galactic Federation, the other solar system. do you think the time travel angle could be so at some point he can just say he's in the wrong timeline and that's why all his predictions sucked? Because uh, I, mean, I would do that. I know he's been using like time travel amnesia as a convenient <laughs> uh, way to rationalize some things not happening or him not remembering them yet. You always got to program in the out, and I it d- seems like that's what he's doing. I do like that the time the mach- the window for time machines is only twenty years. There's a lot of restrictions on time machines that seem to only work in his favor. I and always in round numbers. I didn't think time machines would have such uh, strict rules. Uh, but in each solar system, it's it's a different time period. It might be a of course. See, <laughs> there it is. Different <laughs> timelines that they're able to explore. Mm-hmm. And I was told it had to do with Saturn, something with Saturn in our solar system that it, Saturn was our Kronos planet. Right. So, so, so the, so the 20 no, Kronos program is the name really of began, a Greek myth uh, in the U S with the Nordic races helping secretly, I guess the Navy developed the, the solar warden program. Whereas, whereas the reptilians helping the, the German, who developed his eyebrows and in Antarctica, <laughs> Nazi I mean, scientists, they, they he's a monster. Uh, they did, Warner von Braun. I, I, I assume that they didn't need it to begin with, but the U S did because it was all being done secretly. I'm more yeah, angry at whoever developed his microphone. <laughs> that is terrible sound quality. In this day and age, it's hard to... Okay, so, so how would the Dark Fleet... Uh, rationalize not the getting a decent like mic. They're pretty cheap. back with their own citizens, or like like after agreements were reached with the U.S., they were taking a lot of U.S. citizens, making them work in the Dark Fleet for 20 years, and then putting them back, or military people? Well, in the beginning, the Germans were, were using it on a much smaller scale than what the Americans were doing. Um, they weren't using it in earnest until like around the same time that uh, uh, Solar Warden was. You know, mm-hmm. Dark Fleet was kind of working all around us um, and uh, kind of given you know a free reign, and uh, they were still pulling assets from Earth. They were working on the Lunar Operation Command at times. They were integrated into everything, so they were getting assets to and from um, you know the uh, Dark Fleet using the Twenty and back as well. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Well, you know, I, I thought it was really interesting that uh, Professor Escher it talks about getting supplies Mars to and from the moon. Is, yeah, I'm totally US unimpressed. Extraterrestrial base. So well, he is, makes it seem so kind of like, uh, ordinary. To say a base that's run by the deep state, run by say, you know, whether we're talking about the Dark Fleet, we're talking about interplanetary corporate conglomerate, that they are kind of like taking Americans up there and and they're kind of like using them to I don't know prepare them for kind of deep space operations or doing kind of research and development. Yeah, you have uh, corporate bases, um, almost all of them. <laughs> corporate bases, all right. Bases. Um, there the are moons have been colonized by the NASDAQ. Fleet. Those are the sellouts. Um, and, but the Suits. ones that he's discussing are, are bases that are built and controlled by ETs, and they have given us access to the facilities, and we go and work there alongside them. Okay, all right. So when, when we're talking we're just about the janitors, like Mars, why would the ETs need to set up a base on the moon if they have the ability to travel through the entire solar system? Uh, kind of. Everybody likes a, Everyone wants a place to call home. <laughs> they they want. Uh, this is like their it's version like a, of a rich guy having a condo in L.A. and New York. I mean, it's like the lunatics who go and like spend three months in the rainforest to find like a fucking cockroach or some shit. 
<laughs> you gotta you gotta do the time if you want to get the the science in. And isn't the moon always kind of been the? There's always been bases on the moon because that's where they're conducting the testing. It's another plot hole though, because uh, if I had to lie to a bunch of people, it would be a further away planet that we can't see with our naked eye. Because if there's that many bases on the moon. Yeah, but no one with a telescope is going to manage to see it at but some that's, point. That's not his invention. That's a pretty standard theory. I mean, it would make sense that they could hide themselves. Although, if you ask some of the earlier insiders, they say that they are right there. They're very clear. It's just that we don't want to accept it. Well, they just don't want to show anybody them. You know, we're talking about bases that are either controlled by the Dark Fleet, interplanetary corporate conglomerate. or What is the Dark Fleet? And I know the Dark Alliance. I don't know what the Dark Fleet is. I'm assuming uh, that's a subsect of the Alliance. That's the new spinoff coming to Netflix this fall. <laughs> Dark um, Fleet. Yeah. No, I don't know. I'm assuming he just means the Dark Alliance or whatever. And that's just Britain's what they call themselves. Like, take them there for, for different things. But we're not talking about any bases on Mars that at the moment come under the jurisdictional sovereignty of, say, the American government. <clears throat> Well, obviously, we're not the first ones here. Why would we get dibs? Did you see in the uh, Elon uh, something to do with SpaceX? I think it was some sort of terms of, and agreements. They they tried to say that if they got to to Mars, they get to make the rules there. And then other <laughs> people were saying like, no, it falls under jurisdiction of the U.S., which I don't think it can. I mean, how can we just lay claim to something that no one's ever stepped foot on? Yeah, isn't it just like whoever gets there first? That would be my assumption as well. Is so, I, I mean, I guess technically we got robots there. It's finders keepers. But, yeah, we don't have people there. That would be funny if Elon Musk just decides, like, no, no, it's mine now. I've decided. <laughs> it would make sense because if you think about it, listen, what's, what's the one thing no rich dude owns? A an, planet. An entire planet. Yeah, That's yeah. That's the ultimate rich rich guy move. I can't wait for uh, mu uh, the United States versus Musk in the, <laughs> in the Supreme Court when he's trying to argue his uh, right to claim Mars. He'll be like that lady who tried to sue for ownership of the sun. The, yeah, the one who wanted, like, residuals for sunlight. She wanted a trillion dollars, yeah. <laughs> uh, but at least Elon Musk has the money to actually push a lawsuit through. You know, there, there could be small little bases that have been um, built, especially since I was involved, that are you know, related to the programs that in, ended up aggregating into Space Force, some of the military industrial complex ones. But those typically are smaller, more modular sort of bases that are more in line with what we're used to seeing depicted like, you know, in the 60s and 70s and NASA art, you know, more of those types of bases. Um, and the larger bases that are just completely built out, uh, like cities, are usually going to be, you know, interplanetary corporate conglomerate, um, you know, and, and a lot of the that's bases. That's such a vague, you know, like, Marvel even, Comics term. I know. That's it, uh, that's kind of what I've been uh, marveling at over the last few minutes, is his ability to continue on with giving us absolutely no substance. I mean, it's just like they definitely have a name. If they exist, I don't necessarily doubt the existence, but they definitely have a name outside of generic phrase here. <laughs> generic building number one. Yeah. I mean, at least come up with a name. It's not like it's going to be fact checked anyways. I'd also like to know what the point of this conversation is at, at some level. Like they got a. Apparently this Australian dude just read the article and was just like, crikey, what the fuck <laughs> is this? And then he called up Corey, and then Corey just decided to give him the basics. Yeah, it's. Uh, I want. I still wish he would expand on what we got from the last video when he was talking about the torture, getting tortured. Maybe that, that seems, would explain his incredibly dry stories. Is all the all the entertainment value has been beat out of him? I mean that that seems way more pertinent at this point. No, we got to hear about drab buildings on the moon. <laughs> they are kind of staffed out built out and staffed by the corporate groups anyway so there could be a, a military base that you would consider you know just for um uh, let's say i feel like i'm the, attending uh, like a lunar city uh, planning meeting group. yeah this does have a very <laughs> well, city council base, meeting yeah, going over like new regulations and, next on the agenda we'll discuss the high defenses and what color and, you're allowed uh, to paint your lunar base and most all right on subsection d uh, paragraph 32 inside that base 
that involves in plan- interplanetary corporate conglomerates. He's just the Even Karen at the Homeowners Association. Interplanetary all corporate all conglomerates. Ten- the tentacles go everywhere. Yeah, like that's mm-hmm. quite... Okay. Quite so, literally so think, the most uh, generic way you can say that. It's like calling something business corporation. Yeah. It, it's, like, it's honestly like Tim Dillon's bit when he did, like, the fake business. Yes. It Or uh, what's the BoJack Horseman? Adult businessman or whatever. Uh, yeah. Then there's, uh, what is it? Adult man. Vincent is adult man. Who in, does uh, business. In Mr. Robot, then the Enron th- people are called, like, just evil corp. <laughs> kind of like mentioned Mars uh, having these Mars. Faces. does that mean that we're going to start to learn very soon about what's really going on in Mars that, that, that Mars. Have these, in Mars. multiple things going on over there I mean I, I guess that's going to blow people's minds uh, when you know especially the mainstream blow out my own mind <laughs> this guy doesn't say something interesting so. there already that are running I mean people like Elon Musk are talking about Elon Musk starship, you know taking three months to get to Mars you know using it's the best um, accent ever to kind of like, you Mars know, I do wish I had it He's talking about Elon Musk maybe the first one going but you know does that all now just become kind of like moot because Eshed's revealed that there, there are bases already there and American astronauts are already there so they're obviously getting there you know they're not using methane rockets to get there they're using methane so, does this kind of like mean that what is you know, he a doctor of doing and, and boring yeah <laughs> like i'm a... i'm i'm with you like what is this man supposed to be bringing to this conversation well as we know in this community when they throw the doctor prefix in front of someone rarely does that mean medical doctor that usually means a, a doctor of engineering we probably should or, have checked that huh i guess i'll Damn let it. it keep going but i will look it up uh i try see. to give people the benefit of the doubt but yeah what is he supposed to be bringing to this conversation i'm He's just asking basic questions, and then when he gets just, like, Corey's framed response, he doesn't really have any follow-up. Just, all right, then, let's keep moving on. It it seems like his field is politics. So... The politics of the Galactic Federation? Pretty much. Uh, History of U.S. Secret Space Program. Yeah, everything with him that shows up is about politics. So, I... Yeah, Michael Sala, PhD. My favorite one is when I was looking up one guy once, and he turned out to have a, he was a doctor of chiropractic. And you can actually get a doctorate in that? Oh, I think you can pay for a piece of paper that says you have one. Yeah, I thought that was like a massage uh, certificate. It kind of, all right, let me let this run while I continue to. Uh, that all of that's going to be kind of like just uh, maybe supercharged as the information comes out that this advanced tech exists. Um, I, I, what I think is that for years to come, we will still be building out this more conventional space technology because there's going to be a gap. You know, they'll let us know. I mean, they let us know about uh, the stealth bomber, but how many of you have flown in one? You know, <laughs> in, you know, That's a good point. But I don't know what that has to do with anything, but I like I like absolutely the, nothing. I like the I argument. Flying around in it. This um, guy's a we professor. Really. He's, he's a, so he's legit. An assistant professor in School of International Service at American University. Even the university he works at sounds generic. Yeah, American University. I've seen them in the college tournament a handful of times. Okay. So So it, he's an actual doctor. Not a medical one. A I don't think. But uh he's got a PhD. To yeah. Areas of space. You know, civilians are gonna have to still keep building out you know, this technology until it is opened up. It's going to be opened up immediately. But yeah, it, it's going to probably be pretty frustrating for, you know, I mean, when it, but you know, I think it would kind of wipe out a, a trip to Mars and a conventional rocket if they do announce, you know, hey, we're already there. Uh, we already have colonies there and we can get back and forth, you know. There's going to be a lot of catching up to do with, uh, with, with, with all the info they're going to be giving us. Um, if you know, so I, we I can time travel. Shouldn't we be able to right, just sort I mean, of I'm, teleport? I someone like Elon Musk that maybe... Elon Musk? <laughs> yeah, he keeps calling him Elon Musk. <laughs> I hate his daytime talk show. Uh, it it doesn't make sense that they would need traditional means of transportation if they're capable of time travel. Because time travel is just you walk in one thing and you're transported I mean, through space-time to a different location. You think they could just... Uh, I guess if you're, like, trying to be in this particular timeline, though, maybe it's difficult to maintain the timeline. I have no idea. I've been very dismissive 
of this whole secret space program. Corey's getting up and leaving. <laughs> I don't blame him. Across this Israeli scientist. That would be so uh, funny if he just left. <laughs> he just <laughs> got up and walked Israeli away. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot I was on Skype. He probably got so bored with this bases. dude, I mean, he decided, you know, like, I better go like uh, smoke some weed. <laughs> shit from that position, while all this is just BS conspiracy theory, to, holy cow, it's uh, it's real that you know this secret space program stuff uh, does have legs to it. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, I, think, I thought Corey was going to be gone. You know, it's, it's becoming more and more apparent that there is a secret space program. It's becoming more and more apparent that extraterrestrials exist. And it's, you know, it's just, just below the surface now in the mainstream. Um, hopefully, with disclosures more any like day now and work that we're doing any day, we will be able to bring it out. I mean, I guess he's kind of working on doing that. On, on a number he's kind of gone levels. pretty um, deep and, on the MAGA train. So got to ride out the last. 30 days of this shit. Yeah. <clears throat> is going to be seen as very important, I believe, you know, in, in the next few years. Right. Um, so, I mean, what, what do you think of the likelihood that um, someone like Elon Musk can kind of like do a quick <laughs> turnaround, you know, rather than, because I mean, he's built up his SpaceX industry and they're now doing rocket launches for NASA and for the uh, for Space Force and for the NRO that, uh, that, uh, Musk is doing this now that as he is doing he that kind of yeah. learns more about this do you think he at some point will be briefed because I imagine when he does receive an official briefing how mad do you think say, he's going to be gonna that he wasted with, um, all that money or, or <laughs> building fucking rockets stuff that's and, uh, you know, with the test that is an excellent point this does kind of undermine anything that any of the private companies this is a SpaceX or uh what's the one Jeff Bezos owns Blue like Origin Blue Origin or even NASA yeah, like if we already got the technology, it seems like a huge waste. Yeah, to, uh, if let I would, people work on this, if I was Elon Musk and I found out about this shit, I would be so fucking mad. Well, it's it's like having all the world's scientists work on a rotary phone when we already have the smartphone. Like, how about you introduce them to the new technology that they can then build on top of, as opposed to having them work on useless technology? Yeah, well, that, and I mean, the second they announce it, his company's worth nothing in terms of its space exploration. It'll make me feel better that I didn't buy stock. Yeah, then it's then gonna make then, me feel way better. Then we'll buy it when it's cheap, and then when he does build the anti gravity, if we'll I had cash in, bought that stock when I was a junior in high school, like I wanted to, I would have a lot of money. You'd have <laughs> oodles of money. I, the, the stock was like thirty dollars a share. Actually, I think it was lower than that at the time. They didn't have any real products at that time. They sure didn't, and the the Tesla kind of sucked. Yeah, the battery the, was the battery was battery awful. Was shit. Ah, he's already been a pioneer in shifting us from uh, fossil fuels to uh, electric cars. So couldn't he do the same thing with rockets? With rockets? Yeah, I believe that uh, he's working so closely with NASA now. Um, once Space Force announces certain technologies, that's going to slide right over to NASA. And NASA is immediately going to start using these technologies. And NASA is going to use civilian contractors still. Uh, to do these new technologies seems <clears> dumb. So Elon Musk could, could he could very yeah well yeah it does already be prepared to make that shift as far as we know. He from what I've been told, there are people that have worked around his organization that know quite a bit. And how much they're sharing with him, I don't know. But he at least has access to people. Say something concrete, you greasy-haired <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I know he's working very closely. I hear he's hearing things about stuff that will then do things. Yeah, this feels a little forced on their end, maybe. They've uh, stretched 10 minutes of content to an hour and a half conversation. Yeah, it feels like they felt the need to respond because that article was very specific in terms of what they're talking about, but it also didn't really go any deeper than that the Federation exists. I never thought the day would come that I would miss Wilcox PowerPoints. I know, right? At least I could keep the plot. Like, there was a, a linear progression to the conversation. This is a... Uh, Shit, I yeah. believe is what the kids would call it. Well, you know what it is? He brings the energy. <laughs> He's he, got enthusiasm. Yeah, he brings the vigor with him, and it rubs off on everyone else. He's like the Magic Johnson of UFOs. Minus the AIDS, yes. Yeah. Uh, Space Force, I mean, he's given talks with them, and uh, and he's setting up um, satellites for Space Force. But I know the Secretary of the Air Force, uh, Barbara Barrett, has actually gone on the record to say that uh, the Air Force needs to declassify a lot more technology. So, uh, you know, some of the anti-gravity stuff could be slated for uh, release soon. I, I know that Space Force is in this kind of 18-month setup period. It ends in May of 2001, uh, 
2021. 2021. Set up. And so oh, it's really time for a nap, Grandpa. 20 and back, broke his brain. <laughs> sort it out. But by May 2021, I, I, I anticipate that they're probably going to start getting briefings or start getting the technologies that Lockheed, God, his eyes. Works and kind of like uh, Phantom Works, Boeing, and whatever Northrop uh, is building, that they're going to start getting briefings on this advanced technology that has been if you stare built. at his nose and, and long enough, you start say, hallucinating. Yeah, we're we, we, <laughs> it's like one of those weird then, optical <laughs> illusions. And, 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 starts to open up. And, and maybe that's why 2024... Yeah, I think you're supposed to up, stare at his face and then a blank by, wall would uh, blink really fast. What do you, and then you see a picture? <laughs> then you see a because boring man. <laughs> maybe Jesus Christ. We're planning to release this tech before then so that... I hope he fucking chokes on a Vegemite sandwich. Because it wasn't going to happen with the Constellation rocket, that's for sure. Because that's a white elephant. So, like, uh -huh. we know rockets how, aren't how as good as anti gravity. No. Um, so At least he's making yeah, Corey look good. <laughs> the secret. Uh, right. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, I think that uh, in the next four years, from what I was told about Space Force, was yes, they were going to start unrolling, uh, releasing these technologies. They were, it's going to be done very similarly to how the stealth planes were done. We're going to, around air bases, people are going to see white orbs that disappear and then a triangle is there or another type of craft and then they'll see it descending down into uh -huh. uh, an air base in Germany or somewhere else. Uh, people will get some video and pictures of it. It'll be on the internet for a while. People will talk about, oh, I saw a, an orb and I saw- Isn't that what's going on right now? Location. Yes. He's predicted the future by uh, like telling us about the past. Did with, you know, the stealth I never thought of doing that. <laughs> we'll see one plane dude, it'll be on the news. They'll talk about this new wonderful technology and how it's Really, it just makes sense, you know, if you think about it, you know, how the how this technology works. And it's just amazing that it I sincerely you know, doubt it will just make sense. I think it will you know, exist. Kind of yeah, I don't think it'll make uh, really control. any sense. But it was yeah, done, you know, kind of if it made slowly, sense. We'd have probably figured it out. The next uh, four years into uh, if, you know, well, cause seemingly it has, I guess the purpose is to be able to uh, communicate with the aliens. Like uh, uh, the reason why they didn't tell us about the stealth airplanes and shit is because if they told us then the enemies would know as well yeah we needed to bomb russia it was in the for, middle east it was for war purposes but yeah. the uh the purpose of not releasing these types of crafts really there isn't really much of a purpose unless there is some sort of war going on yeah yeah i mean what what would we really need them for they're they're unnecessary in the scope of what's happening on our planet. Yeah, it's not like we need anti gravity cars. Yeah, which I think some people seem to think that might end up becoming like what replaces fossil fuels and shit. And like I don't think so, man. I think everyone just has this idea of like a almost retro futurism future. Like it's they just think the it's, Jetsons. Yeah, it's the future that was projected in like the fifties, where he throws his wife out of the car with a bundle of money and says "fuck off." <laughs> I never thought about that, but yes, that uh, it the was Jetsons a simpler time. Meets the Jetsons. And he just it's fucking a, chucks uh, her out of the car. Pulls a. He did the same thing Gucci Man did. Gucci hey, Man's a huge Jetsons fan. That's a universal lesson. Trump had an ex-administration. Mm -hmm. So just kind of shifting tracks back to this um, kind of like reorganized super federation that's going to take charge of uh, Earth affairs. What do you know is going to happen from the perspective of like the stuff or the stuff's going to happen? Or, yeah, Jesus. Or this super federation, or what was a super federation? Looking at us now, I mean, who's kind of like liaising with the ETs now? Uh, who's doing the talks, and you know, where are we heading? It's Corey. still all the same people. You know, deep state people are still in contact with ET groups. Uh, you know, the ETs will work what? with whoever's in control, and you heard them work to get other people in control. The aliens <clears throat> are to blame for this election. But, uh, you know, did, did um, the deep state same, you know, when the ET groups that we would, you know, call is that what he's implying? It kind of seems like he's angling that way. Huh. But uh, he, he's talking a lot more about the deep state and the dark alliance slash fleet, which yeah. kind of indicates to me that maybe uh, they're, they're angling for a uh, the bad guy won this round. Yeah, kind of. It does seem like they're setting up their retreat. That is hilarious that the evil empire won yeah oh <laughs> they're, man they're talking about all their positivity and meditation eating better and it's like oh no we just lost <laughs> this is this is how star wars should have ended <laughs> it's just luke gets de decapitated by darth vader in the credits roll yeah he just keeps it moving reptilians 
uh, are still down here interacting with the deep state. Uh, they're obviously losing more and more power. Or, or are they? People are waking up to their power. Are yeah, they? Not, are they? Uh, but, and does know, it matter if people know it? Nordic groups, Anshar type groups. Oh, I didn't even notice. He's got one of the of Dorito headed beings on the back in the know. staircase. Look at the uh, the bottom right there. Right? That's what that is? I think that's a it's Dorito headed to, alien. It's hard to tell, but I think you're right. Also, what the top left looks like some sort of award. It's definitely probably an award. It's got the crystal look to it. Trying to assist us in a positive way. He probably bought it for himself. Many, many other ET groups it's a participation to trophy. So they can engage with commerce and, uh, you know, exchange uh, of culture because, you know, the it's, it's pretty open out there. And, you know, we're in a little bubble right now. And there are a lot of uh, these civilizations that would like to interact with us and get to know us better. Well, I, one of the things that uh, uh, President Trump did recently was he sacked 11 members of the Defense Policy Board. And that included people like uh, Henry Kissinger, Madeleine Albright, Gary Ruffhead, the former Chief of Naval Operations. Henry Kissinger's so not dead like yet? He was trying to <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. He'd been fucking this planet up for like 50 years. Well, kudos to him. I guess uh, being yeah. part of the deep state has its benefits. I was about to say, maybe they have really good health insurance. He's on that uh, DNA Force Plus. <laughs> Something pretty major that, was, that had a lot of influence behind the scenes. And I know Henry Kissinger, uh, as far as I can tell, I mean, he's been involved in the whole kind of uh, deep state, extraterrestrial, global management system for, for decades now. So by Trump sacking these people, I mean, is he really trying to shake things up? Like maybe open up negotiations? I, I think with, he's uh, trying to stage a groups, rebellion. Say, hey, you know, Henry these, Kissinger is 97 fucking years old. This guy's still in the government? No. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, he's been running the government for 50 years. I thought he was dead. There's no way in hell that I mean, they let a 97-year-old man... Well, maybe he knows all the secrets. I'm not going to look it up now, but Jesus Christ. Maybe. Aren't you supposed to retire at like 65? Not in the deep state. Look, George Soros is still trying to fuck the planet up, and he's like 93. Yeah, he looks 103, but... he. T I will say George Soros unfortunately looks like a Sith Lord come to life. It's proof that money can't stop the process of time. Yeah. Time marches forward no matter how many uh, zeros are in your bank account. It's part of the reason why I don't get... I can understand why some people might think he's like uh, the boogeyman because he really looks like it. Negative groups, they don't have as much power as they once did. So, you know, come to me and let's make some deal. Um, the you know, art of the deal. That aspect to it because of some of the people like Henry Kissinger who we know are directly involved with the reptilians and other groups. Um, oh, so that's how he's still alive while being so old. That he's a reptile. Yeah. More about notorious um, for how long he lived. <laughs> I guess he's like a tortoise. Department of Defense. Uh, and, uh, they do live quite a while. Groups that, have, that were being misused. Uh, by I always feel like kids who grow up with it. reptiles are um, weird. And that they it's not the number one choice. Of tech. Rats, to, tortoises, uh, snakes. Secretary. Yeah, that's a Defense. weird kid. It weirds um, me out. You know, I knew it, someone growing uh, up who had, had a rat. With, uh, it's a I, weird kid. I don't know what you do. The thing is, they don't even live that well. I'm just going to let this keep playing. I'm going to turn down the volume and let it keep rocking. But yes, rats only live. It's like two or three years. And they're not exactly a uh, a fuse of animal. Yes. You can't play you fetch with your rat. Them. You don't get a lot of love from your your rat. No, you so just learn about mean, death uh, very quickly and have to worry so about it shit. harboring the plague. <laughs> it's it's going to really have a big impact on uh, professionals, working professionals who are now going to take a second look at he means all of the literature. So it's, I think it's going to like increase demand for people. Like How can a man with a PhD like myself, not be able to get kind of, uh, deeper than this is going to change some well, stuff for professionals? Ahead. Because if well, he gets deeper, that, he's going to be held accountable yeah, for his I, statements. I that, you said, but he's in Australia. They don't care, <laughs> right? I think they got stricter. Uh, is, is I got tenure. We're we're lucky to live in the U.S. where we can pretty much get away with all kinds of uh, heinous accusations on a microphone as long as we preface it the proper way. That's Whereas, true. Libel can be gamed. Yeah, I know it's much stricter in the U.K. I'm not sure about Australia. Australia had that uh, that one radio show that got the nurse to kill herself. I mean, they have comedians. I always consider Australia America's true like brothers because we're England's rejects. Yeah, I I would put Australia at number one on yeah. the uh, the U.S. friend list. And then England is like our pompous cousins that we like when they're drunk, but they're assholes when they're sober. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know where Canada fits into these rankings. They're our gay cousin. <laughs> that's that's pretty perfect, actually. We only see him at family reunions. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, the 
pretend to like them. <laughs> I mean, we have more Not because of their lifestyle, just because of them. I mean, we have just people in their everyday life that are seeing things that don't make sense that are going on in the world. I've and been watching one for several hours. <laughs> <laughs> I do but dig the architecture of his doorway. Conspiracy theories. You know, conspiracy <laughs> theory about aliens. It's, it it looks like an MC Escher painting. I don't know what the fuck's going on there. Yeah, I can't tell if that was actually now, intentional or just whoever building it was like so, fucked up. Yeah, like I said, it's the, the shape of a Tetris piece. Yeah, but it looks like it's right missing one. In Hollywood, uh, these topics are extremely popular, esoteric. You know, oh, in Hollywood, um, as in Alex Jones, there are the Hollywood elite like are talking to the aliens. When this information comes out, you know your books. How many do you have? Five now, or is it more? On the Jesus space program? Christ! Oh, five well, books. Program I gotta start writing so, books. One, but how many one, were New York Times five. bestsellers? Yeah, and, and those books may become required reading in universities, or at least quoted from. Heavily. What if I change my first name to PhD? And, you know, people. Well, and I can write that on the cover of the book. It's just I mean, PhD followed by Johnson. I mean, if those dudes who sent in Mein Kampf but with the feminist <laughs> twist got away with it. More emails coming in from people that have seen me on like Jenny McCarthy or somewhere else. Oh, we saw you. Oh, we saw you, Corey. It was much better. Interest is growing, and I think that um, the information that we've been putting out there is going to be some of the most. Uh, is he not wearing a wedding ring? You know, Wait for his hands wow. to come back on screen. I didn't see one. Right, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trouble and the moment, you know, maybe he took it off with the gloves. Connecting all the dots, <laughs> all of these um, secret space program revelations that you've been doing and others have been uh, revealing for, for a few years now, and, and now with these kind of like official acknowledgments. Oh, great. Now we get to the, the fillet each out, other part of the conversation. Really See, this is why you always got to keep a little new info in the uh, holster. Yes, yeah, so yeah, you can for me have something to say like, just in case of emergencies like this. How do all of the pieces of the puzzle? Fit together now we're able to fit together the pieces of the puzzle a lot more so you what know, puzzle what pieces <laughs> be specific on, i would uh, ask Corey why the they had an israeli spy chief release it and, you know why it's or science chief today. whatever he was release and, it instead uh, of cory kind of like, yeah uh, wouldn't cory have a better connection yeah why well, like wouldn't they use him as the go-to you think he feels slighted because of that probably <laughs> yeah probably they, they chose someone else over him Partly, because that's one of the things that I think, well, Roddenberry's vision of a Star Trek future, because you've talked about that too. Star times, Trek the, future. The military wants the Star Trek future. So I, I was kind of like really amazed On to see Mars. that in uh, 2019, uh, there was, the, there was a, something called the Space Futures Workshop that was organized by uh, Air Force Space Command. And that's, being, that, that's the predecessor to Space Force. And I was really amazed to see that this is like an unnecessary scenario. Like and their pre, preferred scenario uh, was the Star Trek preview future. to a movie. <laughs> and I thought that was really interesting. That a movie that doesn't exist. Like, like where they just aren't giving yeah. you any of the good parts. It's and, just and like the course, retarded backstory. Uh, all filler. Uh, all the time. It's the unnecessary prequel. Do we want to uh, finish this or do we want to skip around a little bit and see if, if maybe they're saving the good stuff for like the final 10 minutes here? We can we can jump around. Yeah, I don't think I don't think we're going to miss a whole lot if I skip seven or eight minutes here. Not going to have a problem getting a docu series of some sort going on on a channel somewhere. Okay, now they're, they're now they're just talking about media. I think I think we've got everything we need to I, out of this one. I think we know what they were going with. Makes sense. I mean, I think he's kind of been doing his little media tour here in hopes of pushing to get his graphic novel turned into some sort of TV show. I'm assuming have since they, Gaia have, was going to be that, but have, that uh, went sour. Have they announced how much they're going to sell the graphic novel for? I don't know, whatever they'll get offered, I suppose. Because assuming it's a reasonable price, I, of course, would like to buy one in order to talk about it. I mean, But yeah. I'm also not paying, like, $150. I mean, it'll probably be fairly reasonable. I don't think it's done. Uh, but it does seem like, yeah, he's trying to wiggle his way into some sort of alternate indie media company making this. It's got to be coming out soon with the amount of appearances and videos he's posting. The graphic novel, I believe, is coming out fairly soon. And then from there, I think he's just going to be pushing to get a movie made. I pray to God it's not as boring as he's been these last two weeks. Well, as long as they don't let him write it, <laughs> as long as he's just getting like a production credit, I think it, it'll it be okay. Corey Good is getting dangerous, uh, dangerously close to being put on the, the payment, pay no mind list. He's... Yeah, he's really, I mean, I give him credit for fleshing out parts of the story, like with the Jenny McCarthy interview, he actually had a few 
new things to say, but... uh, I keep coming back to uh, being more impressed with what David Wilcock was able to do. Yeah, I mean, I think you see why he was considered... He took the star, the up-and-coming young star, because he's, he's electric... He does have a very good memory. The dude remembers a ton of shit. Uh, and he's just an entertaining person to watch talk. He was also able to take two incredibly boring individuals with uh, Corey and Emery Smith and make them interesting enough to pay attention to. Yeah, I mean, Corey really does. He is He's the Pippin. Like, you can take Pippin without Michael, but it's not the same. It's just him on the trailblazers. Yeah. Not, the, not the same. Still yeah. a good player, not the same. But yeah, I think he's... I mean, he's got to be just running out of new shit to reveal. He's already created such a a massive narrative as it is. Can you imagine living a life where you were kidnapped by the government at a young age and sent to outer space to fight aliens and all your stories sucked? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, a hard, that's harder to believe than it actually happening, do you honestly. you know how fucking boring a person you have to be? To have apparently fought aliens and not be able to conjure one decent anecdote and episode. Maybe, maybe the the wipe when they sent him back to civilian life, uh, <laughs> it got rid of all of his like uh, entertaining characteristics. So now he's just a monotone, uh, the slow talking man. The aliens implanted a chip and removed his funny bone. It uh, it was the only way he could communicate. Once he, again, if I had to guess what one thing makes our uh, our human race different from the other ones is, I think, uh, humor. In which case, Corey may be an alien. Well, I think they just removed all his human parts. Not down <laughs> there, up there. All right, I think we can, <laughs> on that note, wrap up. Corey Good doesn't have a penis. Uh, hootie hoop. Mamba out. <laughs>